Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. This is James Oldfield here with you, and we hope you're ready for our study from God's Word. This is a live calling program. If you'd like to be a part of the program, I'm going to go ahead and give you the phone numbers where you can call in and participate in this program. The area code is 336. The phone number is 427-9696. That's 427-9696, 427-WMYN, or 627-9563, 627 627- Nine five six three six two seven W L O E. So if you can, if you want to be a part of the program, this is that's how you do it. We take live uh, phone calls. We're discussing Bible topics, and you may have a question or a comment. You may want to add something to the discussion. We'll be glad to do that. This is a, <clears throat> a program where you can ask questions that probably your preacher won't answer, and or that won't let you ask, and so. We uh, want you to realize that this is a program that that uh, entertains questions, and we certainly want you to be a part of that. Today, let me just go ahead and tell you what we're going to be talking about, and then we'll uh, give you some more information here. Uh, friends, uh, we're offering $1,000. I mean, who can't use $1,000? $1,000 reward uh, for something that we've been looking for uh, for a long time and just never have been able to find it and that is any denomination that you can find in the Bible. Now friends if I said can you find the church that Christ built and established in the Bible if you can I'll give you a thousand dollars we would be handing out a thousand dollars hand over fist. But when you ask someone to find the church that you read about in the Bible in other words just described in a certain way and offer them $1,000 if they can find the church that they're in as meeting that description, they can't do it, friends, because denominations do not look like the church you read about in the Bible. And that's why we're saying $1,000. This is the home of the $1,000 reward. And I, I'm encouraging you, ask your preacher, pastor, bishop, rabbi, whoever it may be, you know, find these denominations in the Bible and see if you can't uh, win uh, or earn a thousand dollars. Now, your preacher's going to want a tithe of that if you can find it, but don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You won't have to give him a tithe because I don't believe you'll find it. But I really hope you look for it. Most people never stop to consider whether the church they're in is even in the Bible, and the reason why is because the preachers tell them the church doesn't matter. But friends, as we go through the program today, as we go through this lesson, you're going to see that the church does matter. It is important. And just because a particular religious group says they are the church that you read about in the Bible, and simply because they say they're doing things like they did in the Bible, that does not mean that is what they are. I mean, a person can be happy, a person can be sad, but that doesn't make that person, that doesn't make who the person is. In other words, that, that, that doesn't determine who they are just because they possess a certain characteristic. And so that's what we're looking at today. We're going to be looking at some characteristics. How do you find the church in the Bible? Again, if I told you, find the church that you read about in the Bible, and I'll give you $1,000, it would be easy to find. Even in this area where there are not many uh, uh, churches of Christ that are, that are, are faithfully teaching the, the gospel, you would still be able to find one because you could see what it, how it's described and see what it looks like based upon what the Bible says. So a thousand dollar reward. So get your pen and paper out. We're going to give you more information about how what what should you be looking for. I mean, if I if I'm looking for if I was looking for a lost child, I mean, if an Amber Alert came out, uh, I get a, a Amber Alert on my phone. And my phone, uh, I get uh, a text message and it describes a car. It gives some, uh, maybe a license plate, description of the child that's been abducted. So there's the Amber Alert. And I'm looking for a certain car, driver, license plate, so forth, and child. Well, that's how you know if you found the right person. Well, how do you know if you found the right church? That's what we're going to be discussing today on A Word from the Lord. Friends, the Word of the Lord is brought to you by the Church of Christ. I mean, it's 250 the Boulevard. Uh, we meet Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study, 10 a.m. for worship, and Thursdays at six at 7 p.m. Uh, there in Eden, 250 the Boulevard. And my name is James Oldfield. If you want to reach me, my phone number is 276-340-2653. You can call that number on the air if you, if you want to. We'll put you right on the air. 
But the phone number to, to be on part of the program is 336-427-9696, 427-WMYN, or 627-9563, that's 627-WLOE. And uh, Friends of the Church of Christ, um, in your area, we, we uh, love Bible discussions. We love to have individuals asking questions uh, about what we're teaching. We try, to give them, we try to give them Bible answers, put them right up on the screen. If you're in our assemblies, we'll put them right up on the screen so you can see them. And uh, you'll know that what's being told is right from the Bible. So we hope that you will uh, take advantage of that and let us uh, be of assistance to you as we're looking for the truth. Now, so a thousand dollars. What what do you look for in the uh, the the Church of the New Testament? If you're looking for the Church of the New Testament, how do you know if you if you found it? You may be saying, "Well, I found it. I'm I'm in the Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, whatever church." Okay, well, let's see if that's really the criteria. Because like that Amber Alert, if um, you know if you get an Amber Alert and the, and the police say we're looking for a certain make and model of a car with a certain a uh, description of a, an adult and a certain description of a of a child. the The car may be the right color, but it may be the wrong make. The car may be the the right make and model, but it's the wrong color. Maybe the right color of car, but it's the wrong uh, person inside of it, or the the people don't meet the description. So, there's a lot of things that that you need to consider, friends, when you're looking for the truth. And I hope that you are. Jesus said. You know, ask and you shall receive, seek and you'll find. And if you're really looking for the truth, friends, you'll find it. And I believe it's easy to find, easy to understand, and easy to, to know if you found the church that you read about in the Bible. Now, the one way that you're going to know about the church of the New Testament is going by its characteristics. So like you would know about that car or the driver or the, the abducted child You'll know if you found the church of the New Testament by looking at some of the characteristics. Now, just because a, a denomination uh, exhibits a certain characteristic, that does not mean that you found the right church. Okay? You say, well, you know, I, I pick up these tracts, I read these tracts, or I hear people say, well, just you find a Bible-believing church. What does that mean? You know, what does that mean, a Bible-believing church? I don't really know what that means. That's kind of a, one of those vague, ambiguous statements that people say, and everybody kind of gives it their own meanings. But a Bible-believing church, I mean, if, if that means someone that holds up a Bible, if the preacher holds up a Bible and says, well, I, I'm, I'm reading from the King James, if that's, if that's the definition of a Bible-believing church, then there's a lot of those. But it's a matter of what is being taught uh, and what is being practiced, that's going to determine if you've actually found the church that you read about in that book that is the Bible. So, you know, we're looking for certain characteristics. I mean, what, what does it look like? What is it? Uh, 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 what are some of these characteristics? Now, let's just start with this. Now, now today, I'm going to be talking about some of the characteristics of a, a pretty popular are, are common denomination and it's just because it is so prevalent that we're looking at this particular denomination but it, it applies to any denomination and that's what we're talking about because churches describe themselves they describe themselves in such a way so you'll know who they are or what they are now more and more churches are becoming very vague on their can I just say brand? They're being becoming very vague on what they teach or what they believe. They're taking names off of buildings so that they're not identified as a certain particular religious group. In other words, they're taking Baptist off, off the off the sign, and they're not being identified as Baptist, even though that's pretty much what they are. I was talking to a man the other day, and uh, he said he goes to the I can't remember the name of it now Harvest something up there in, in uh, Martinsville or Stewart in that direction and he said well we're pretty much church of god but you know we don't uh necessarily follow too closely to it or you know they don't listen to the headquarters or whatever they're kind of independent of that so i mean what is that you know when you hear harvest tabernacle number seven I mean, what, what 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 do they believe what do they practice uh, i was talking to a young man up in uh, uh illinois the other day and uh, he was telling me he was telling me where he was attending at the time 
And he was describing, I said, was well, it kind of like a community church? He said, no, it's a non-denominational. Well, okay, in my mind, that's a community church, non-denominational. Everybody's coming together in one place, and we're not really picky about what we believe. So how do you know if that church is right? And by the way, that young man, uh, if if uh, I'm, I know he'll be listening, uh, I'm glad to, to say that uh, he left, that he was, a, he was a member of the Lord's Church, and he was in this uh, denomination, this community non-denominational type uh, organization and um, he called me and left a message and, and told me that he had gone back and he repented and he was back with uh, God's people and so I'm really glad to hear that and uh, I hope that uh, uh, he continues to, to grow and increase his faith and strength from God's word and, I, and I'm glad that I was able to help him a little bit um, and, and bringing that about, if I helped at all, but I'm I'm just grateful that um, to know that, and I appreciate him telling me this, and I'm looking forward to uh, talking to him later on and giving him some more encouragement in any way that I can. But how do you know if the church that you're in is really the church in the Bible? That's really what we're talking about. Well, one of the characteristics of the Church of Christ. Now we're looking for the Lord's Church. One of the characteristics of the Church of Christ is they practice and teach. They teach and practice. I guess that would be the proper uh, uh, order there. They teach and practice baptism. Now, friends, when we say that, there's a lot of people who go, well, <laughs> man, we baptize too. You know, we baptize too. We, uh, old uh, Jerry Carter in, uh, in in Reedsville, he said, well, that's that's why we're called Baptists. We deep, deep water Baptists. We're in deep water. Well, friends, just because you baptize, does, does that mean that you are the same church that's being described in the Bible. I mean, the, the 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 church of the New Testament, the church of Christ, the Lord's church, the church that Jesus said upon this rock I'll build in Matthew 16, 18, indeed teaches and practices baptism. But that does not mean it's, not, it's the Baptist church. It's not the Baptist church just because it teaches and practices. Now, there's a number of Baptist preachers, and I know I've, I've played you uh, some of their statements where they say, well, Jesus Jesus baptized, therefore Jesus was a Baptist. Well, actually the Bible says Jesus baptized nobody, so Jesus was not a Baptist, uh, even though he definitely taught baptism. But contrary to what the folks in the Baptist church claim, friends, they're not the church, even though they may practice baptism. Um, I want you to consider, uh, let me see if I can uh, uh, do this. I want to... I want to let you listen to a Baptist preacher, and I don't think this is going to work out right for me, so I'm going to try again. But um, I have a, a, a clip of a, of a Baptist preacher that's saying, you know, the Baptist church is the, is the closest thing that, that he has found to the New Testament church. Well, friends, if that was the case, then you would find more than one characteristic other than just baptism, okay? I mean, you can't just let, well, there's, there's one thing, and so now I found a person. It's like me saying, I'm looking for, uh, I don't know, <laughs> draw, draw a blank here. I'm looking for uh, uh, some popular person. I'm looking for, for Donald Trump, you know, and I found a guy because he's got, you know, a wild comb over. Well, that, that doesn't mean that I've, I've uh, found Donald Trump just because he's got uh, the same hairstyle. See that? Uh, just because you have one characteristic doesn't mean that you found the person. I know there's a lot of people probably saying, you know, don't talk about Donald Trump, whatever. I'm just, I'm, I'm, that's the first person that came to mind. And uh, so, but anyway, listen to what uh, uh, this fellow says about following the, the New Testament. No, let's see here. Uh, yeah, the New Testament pattern. This is a Baptist preacher here, and he's going to he's going to say why he thinks the Baptist church is so close. And and uh, he's he's going to say that they follow the the New Testament pattern, is his argument, and that's why he says it's so close. But if you're following the New Testament pattern, friends, you're going to do everything uh, that the Bible says, and not just you know not just one thing or, or two things, and you're going to do it in the in the Bible way, I'm having a little trouble getting my audio clips going here, but we'll figure it out in just a second. So, uh, uh, but anyway, if if you're following the pattern, 
and I and I'm I'm glad to hear someone talk about following the pattern, because that means you recognize that there is some formula or some descriptive elements to knowing what this what the New Testament church looks like. Uh, if you've got a pattern, then you're you're looking for a certain thing. The independent means of a church patterns itself after the New Testament example, and it stands alone under the authority uh, of the I'm Bible. Convinced that for uh, in this day and time, that the uh, the the autonomy of the local church, the independent fundamental Baptist church, is the closest that I can find, James, that uh, uh, meets my needs. I believe that the independent fundamental. Baptist Church today is the closest thing that I can find to that New Testament church. Now, the name Independent Fundamental uh, Baptist Church is traditionally used by uh, churches that pattern themselves after the example of the early church. Okay, so the uh, fundamental Independent Baptist Church patterns itself after the Bible, blah, blah, blah. Well, friends, if that's the case, then why aren't there other uh, characteristics being demonstrated by the Baptist Church, if they're the closest to the Bible. Now, now, and again, what what was the pattern? You know, he said they follow the pattern. Well, friends, listen to what what Christ said about baptism. Let's just take baptism for a moment. Not not all the the whole pattern, but let's just take this one piece of the pattern. Jesus said and taught. All right, he practiced. Uh, I said he commanded baptism to be taught and practiced, and that's really where we're going to find if you're really following the pattern. In Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19, listen to what Jesus said. He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Now, is that what the Baptist church teaches and practices? All right. Is that, is that what, it, what they teach? Now notice, in Mark 16, Mark 16 and verse 16, here's what Jesus said. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now, here's the difference. Now, here's the difference between what is taught in the Bible and what was practiced by the New Testament church and what is taught and practiced by the Baptist church. Uh... In Acts 2, in verse 38, the Lord's church, the church of the New Testament, the church that we're looking for, Peter said to the folks on the day of Pentecost, when they asked, what must they do to be saved? He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, friends, that's, that's what the New Testament church taught. That was the pattern. That's what we're looking for. I mean, if you're saying that you're like the church of the New Testament, then let's go back to the church of the New Testament and see what they did. But, friends, the Baptist church does neither of those things. The Baptist church does not teach baptism for the remission of sins and does not practice it. Here is a statement from the, uh, uh, from the Baptist manual. It says, It is not a question as to whether he can be saved without baptism, but whether he can be a true disciple and refuse or neglect thus to obey and confess the Savior. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, Acts 2.38. Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, Acts 22.16. Now that's all from the Baptist manual. But now listen to this statement. Baptism may not be essential to salvation, but it is essential to obedience. Now what did they just tell us, friends? They're telling us, that you have to be baptized to be a true disciple. You can't be a, a true disciple and refuse or neglect to obey the command. Thus, baptism is essential to obedience. But it's not essential to salvation. Now, friends, I, I just that makes me want to scratch my head. I don't understand that. How can, a, some, how can someone say baptism is essential to baptism uh, to obedience but not essential to salvation but uh but obedience is essential to salvation now, i think we've already talked about this a uh, number of times if if obedience is essential to salvation and baptism is essential to obedience then baptism is essential to salvation 
You just, I mean, I don't know how you slice that so many ways that you don't get that. And here's another manual. Here's another manual. It says, this is a, this is a note. This is from the Hiscox manual. Baptism is not essential to salvation for our churches utterly repudiate the dogma of baptismal regeneration. But it is essential to, to the obedience since Christ has commanded it. Now, friends, think about that. It's essential to obe uh, obedience because Christ commanded it. But it's not essential to salvation because they reject or they utterly repudiate the dogma of baptismal regeneration. Well, friends, why do you reject something that Christ said do? And then turn around and say, well, you have to do it to be obedient to Christ, but not to be saved. I just, I mean, anybody, I mean, a blind man can see that. I mean, if you can see through a ladder, you can see there's the contradiction there. In Hebrews 5 verse 9, the Bible says, being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Now, if baptism is essential to obeying Christ, well, obeying Christ is what brings salvation. So how then can you, can you be saved by not being baptized, but yet saved by obeying Christ? That's, I mean, that's, that's crazy talk, isn't it? And so we're looking for the church that's going to baptize for the remission of sins. The Baptist church is not it. The New Testament church baptizes, but it's not the Baptist church. See that? You're taking one characteristic of the New Testament church, practicing baptism, and just because there's one group of people out here that says, well, we baptize, but we have a, we've got a baptismal uh, service scheduled for next Sunday or third Sunday of the, uh, uh, of the quarter, or whatever it may be. Well, friends, that's, that doesn't mean you're doing it the way the Bible says do it. So, so how then can you say that, that the Baptist church then is the Lord's church? If you're looking for $1,000, don't tell me you found the New Testament church and show me the Baptist church. Now, you may have some disagreement with that. You may want to contradict that. That's fine. Give me a call, 336-427-9696 or 627-9563, 627-WLOE. Uh, so that's one characteristic is that they, they practice baptism. Now, but baptism for the remission of sins and uh, that is essential to salvation, which, you know, I don't know of many denominations that do that even. But here's another thing. Listen, the Lord's church, the church we read in the Bible, is and was and is independent. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean that, that there's no earthly headquarters that's dictating to them what they have to do, where they have to go. Like, for example, uh, some Baptist churches are part of a convention, the Southern Baptist Convention. And, I mean, the Methodists have their convention and they have all their, you know, where, where they rearrange their uh, creed books and that and so forth. I mean, there's headquarters of the Church of God in Cleveland, Tennessee. There's, you know, headquarters in uh, denominations in Memphis. There's headquarters in Utah, headquarters of churches all over the place. So I know that those, in the, in those uh, churches in that particular denomination are not independent. They have a headquarters that's telling them where to go and what to do. I remember talking to a... Uh, uh, a fellow that was in a, a man that was in a Methodist church, and uh, he said he had, they had a woman preacher, and uh, he didn't really like her. And I said, "Well, what do you do if you don't like a preacher?" He said, "You just, you just smile, you know, you just, you just deal with it." I, I just can't, I just can't imagine that, you know. Well, I don't like it, but I'm gonna deal with it because the headquarters says she has to be here. Well, why don't you just find the church that's in the Bible, and you don't have to put up with the headquarters sending you. Uh, people that you don't like preaching, you know, just go back to the Bible and you'll get a Bible preacher. You'll get someone that's preaching the Bible and following the Bible. Well, the, the Lord's church was not ruled by a convention. It didn't have a head, uh, 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 earthly headquarters, like some of these Baptist churches do, but, but the very idea that some churches are called fundamental independent tells me that they're not governed just because, or just because they are independent does not mean that they're the church of the New Testament. Uh, just because they're outside of a headquarters or outside of a of a guideline, they still have their creed books. They still have their catechisms. Now, but look, look at the New Testament church. 
In Acts 14, verse 23, the Bible says, And when they had ordained uh, them elders in every, uh, in every uh, church, so elders in every church, in Acts 20, verse 17, it says, And from Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. So here's one more characteristic. I mean, one is just because you say, well, the church is independent. You know, we're out here, we're doing our own thing, we don't get our marching orders. Okay, that's, that's all fine, well, and good, but that doesn't mean that you're the church of the New Testament. Let's look at how you're organized. Let's look on the inside. Uh, the church of the New Testament, they had elders, not pastor, not one pastor, but a number of pastors. There was always more than one elder or pastor in the New Testament church. Uh, that's just, you know, that's the way the New Testament church was organized. Now, listen again. Listen again to what um, we're saying about denominations. They will elect and select a pastor, singular pastor, uh, to be their, I don't know, you their leader. You did Hills Baptist Church. I was invited up there at the end of August, so I've only been there, uh, voted in as, as pastor there, uh, about a month. All right, so here was a man who said he was voted in as pastor. Well, friends, there's, there's no single pastor in the New Testament. No single, no, no, no single man rule, all right? You would have individual pastors, but there's more than one. If you've got elders, you're going to have more than one. And that's because God knows that that uh, uh, if one man is in charge of everything, then there's there's going to be trouble. So ordain elders in every church. Now they have to be qualified. Obviously, they have to be they have to meet the qualifications that that are set forth in uh, the Bible. First uh, Timothy chapter uh, three: If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth good work. A bishop, which is also an elder or pastor, must then be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, good behavior. Uh, given hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not gritty, filthy lucre, and so forth. All these characteristics uh, are describing an elder. But there are a plural of men that serve. Now, the other day I had a fellow call me and he asked about, uh, you know, do we have, what do you do about elders and, and deacons or whatever? Or he's actually asking about deacons. And uh, I said, you know, what do you do if you don't have if you don't have men that are qualified, then you don't have them. I mean, that's all there is to it. You can't have elders or deacons, for that matter, if they're not qualified. So, uh, first they have to be qualified, and then if you have uh, one man that's qualified, you have to have someone else that's qualified as well. But in the denominational world, they don't really look at how God organized the church. They look at it like, well, the pastor is, uh, he's our hes our boss, he's our head dog, I guess you might say. As a matter of fact, listen to what the, uh, the Hiscox Manual says. It says, the pastor has the oversight and supervision of all the interests of the church and of all departments of its work, both spiritual and temporal. So the pastor, singular, has oversight and supervision of all the interest of all the interests of all departments of the church, spiritual and temporal. Now, friends, you know, just a little side note here. Uh, when folks say that the the Lord's church is a cult, I wish they'd read their own manual. That sounds pretty cultish, right there, to me. Right? I mean, when I read that, I think David Koresh. Right? Branch Davidians. Next thing you know, they're all going to be camped out down there in Waco. Now, is that does that sound like the church you read about in the Bible? The pastor has the oversight and supervision of all the interests of the church in all departments, both spiritual and temporal? Now, it goes on. It says, it is his privilege and his duty to hold a watchful supervision over all the work of the church that the purposes of Christ may be served in every way possible. So he's he's looking, he's the supervisor over all the work of the church. One man 
is a supervisor over all the church. This is why God says more than one elder. All right, elders. One man? You put all this on one man? I mean, that's, that's foolish to start with. Just from the standpoint of, can he do it all? Can he, can he handle all this oversight as one man? And then to say, well, we're going to put one man over, in, over, over, uh, over all the oversight and uh, let him have charge of everything. Well, I'm just kind of giving him uh, free reign there. Uh, he is equally the shepherd of all his flock. It's what the the um, it goes on to say there in the in the manual. So oversight and supervision of all the interests of the church and all the departments, spiritual and temporal. It's no wonder that that one man, the pastor, can get up and tell you, give your tithes, give your love offerings, you know, give the the uh, anniversary, the the pastor anniversary offering. Give an offering to the first lady. Give an offering to this. Give an offering to that. Give a love offering to this and love offering to that. Pass the plate several times till we get enough. You know, pass the plate on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Anytime we feel like it. Why? Because we had not got enough. Friends, that's what you get when you get away from the pattern that God has set forth. So when I'm looking at, when I if I'm looking for the church that I read about in the Bible, friends, I... I'm starting to realize, you know, if you even thought that the Baptist church was like the church in the New Testament, I wish you'd reconsider. I hope you reconsider. This is this is, sounds nothing like the church that you read about in the New Testament. Right? I mean, this is, this is uh, um, certainly a, a man-made church. Listen, in Acts 20 and verse 28, now this is what Paul said to the elders, right, the elders from Ephesus. He said, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Again, elders. Elders. So, the New Testament church is independent in the sense of it has, its, it would have its own uh elders, its own overseers, it's not over, uh, being overseen by some uh, national or international headquarters. If, if, if you're going on the road, friends, and you see a sign that says international church or something, you know what? That's That ought to give you a red flag right there. They're telling you right there that their headquarters is not, uh, they're not independently governed by the Bible. They're, they've got a, a headquarters somewhere. I mean, there's a reason why it's called Roman Catholic. I mean, the Papa, the Pope, he's in Rome. He's in Rome. I remember one time we had some good friends that were uh, that were Roman Catholic, and the mom was saying why she was Roman Catholic. She was defending Roman Catholic, Roman Catholicism, and the daughter said, "I'm not a Roman Catholic." She said, "I'm just a Catholic." And the mom said, no, you're a Roman Catholic. No, I'm not either. I'm an American. And and this wasn't a child that was saying this was this this girl was, you know, a teenager. She just did not like the idea of being a Roman at all. Well, I wouldn't like the idea of being a Catholic. You know, you can be a Roman, I don't care where you're from, but I'd want to be in the Lord's church. That's what the most important thing is. So you can say, Well, you know, we're independent. We don't have these headquarters. We have uh we're we're governed by one pastor. Well, if you're governed by one pastor, that's wrong. If you're governed by a convention, that's wrong too. If you're governed by a headquarters somewhere, that's wrong. See, it's, it's just as wrong to be a part of a convention or a, uh, uh, a collective uh, body that is governed from a headquarters somewhere just as much as it is to be ruled by one man. That's not the way... God designed the church. That's not the way the church of Christ that you read about in the Bible is set up. So, uh, you know, why would you be part of it? If you're looking for it, I'm trying to give you some characteristics about, about the Lord's church. And I hope you see that if you're in the, if you, if you were really seriously about, serious about looking for the church of the New Testament and you think that you're in it, consider these things because chances are if you're in the Baptist church, you may have never heard these things before. All right? So 
Just because the church baptizes uh, doesn't mean it's the Lord's church. The Lord's church baptizes and teaches baptism for the mission of sins, but just because you say, well, we baptize, I guarantee you don't baptize for the mission of sins. And that does, that, so that immediately means you're not part of the church of Christ. You know, you're not, that's not the church you're in. You say, well, we, we're independent. We don't have headquarters, okay? But that doesn't mean you're part of the church of Christ. The church of Christ is independent in the sense of it's autonomous. Um, each congregation it governs itself by the Bible. The Bible is the standard and the guideline, and that's that's how God intended it. So you say, well, I'm independent. Well, I say you're too independent. You're so independent, you, you've moved away from the Bible. And that, that uh, independence is really rebellion, you know, if you want to get right down to that. So we're looking for the church in the, in the New Testament. It's independent. It is. It baptizes. But it's not the independent Baptist church. Now, let's, let's look at it from another standpoint. Let's talk about another uh, group of individuals that I'm sure claim to be part of the Lord's church. Uh, the, the church of Christ was and is evangelistic. Uh, the Bible says in Acts 8 and verse 4, therefore they, went, were they, therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. So let's say they were uh, missionary minded. Now friends, you can be, you may be part of the missionary Baptist church or you may be part of a missionary something church, but that doesn't mean that you're part of the Lord's church. See, the Lord's church was... Uh, mission minded they were they were they're going into all the world but that doesn't mean that they're that uh, that that the Lord's church is the missionary Baptist church see yeah they went everywhere preaching the gospel they were proclaiming it but that doesn't mean that that uh, any church that claims to be missionary or evangelistic are evangelical, that doesn't mean that they're part of the, of the Lord's church. See, again, just because you have one characteristic right or maybe two characteristics that, re, that resemble it, that doesn't mean that that's the right, that, the right uh, uh, church. Just like you can say, well, I'm looking for a certain person. Well, what do they got? Well, they got blonde hair. Okay. Well, you can find a lot of people with blonde hair. That doesn't mean that they're the right person. And you can find a lot of churches that are mission-minded. I mean, my, the, uh, uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, they're very mission-minded. I mean, they send uh, their young people out into the mission field for, you know, for two years. And, um, I mean, they, they send people out in all the world, so are the Jehovah's Witness for that matter. But, friends, that doesn't mean that they're right just because Jesus said go into all the world and preach the gospel. These folks are going to all the world and preaching uh, something that's not the gospel, another gospel. So you can see how one characteristic might be right, but that doesn't mean that it's uh, the right church. I mean, when Jesus said, go into all the world and teach the gospel, teach all nations, well, that's, that's good to be you know, oriented in that way, but you have to teach the right thing. Jesus said, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Now, that's a key point that a lot of people forget. Go into all the world and teach, the, uh, uh, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. Now, friends, if you go into all the world and say, well, I'm missionary minded. I'm going to all the world, just like Jesus said, I'm going to all the world. But what are you teaching? Are you teaching people to observe things that Jesus never even said anything about? Are you teaching people to observe things that, that Christ never talked about? I mean, if you are, then you're teaching another gospel. That's what we're saying. These people going to all the world, they're not teaching what the Bible says. They're not giving uh, people uh, any kind of information that Jesus uh, said do. Teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. Where did you hear anybody, where did you hear Jesus say anything about the Baptist church, the missionary Baptist church, the fundamental independent Baptist church? Where did you hear Jesus say anything about the Roman Catholic church or the Methodist church or the Latter-day Saints church or the Jehovah's Witness church? Where did, where did you hear him say anything about that, see? He said, well, these people, they're dedicated. They're, they're going out to all the world. Okay, well, that's good. 
I'm glad they have that zeal, but it's zeal without knowledge. Romans 10, uh, Paul said they have a zeal without knowledge. I, you know, you can admire that quality, but if they're going out teaching something that's wrong, that's not what Jesus said. That's not what, that's not what the New Testament church would do. And so I know, I know that when people say, well, this is a characteristic of the New Testament church, they went everywhere. Yeah, they did. They sure did. Look at this. In uh, uh, Acts 8, verse 4, they went everywhere preaching the gospel. And uh, notice in Acts chapter 11, and I'm going to look about verse uh, 20. Uh, let's see here. Uh, verse 19, Acts 11, verse 19. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as to uh, Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto Jews only. They, they were preaching the word. But friends, what you're preaching is not the word. So, well, James, I, well, we, we have the Bible. Well, that gets back to what I said. Just because you have the Bible, that doesn't mean that you're following it exactly. See that? You can, you can have the instruction book that doesn't mean you're following it. I mean, anybody that's ever put something, you know, one of those uh, um, prefab uh, pieces of furniture together, you know, you're putting it together, a desk or or a bookshelf or something like that, and you're putting it together, and you've got the instructions right there, but, you know, you're not going to look at that. I mean, no self-respecting man is going to follow the instructions, right? I mean, we, we know how to put things together. All we need is a screwdriver and a hammer, and we can we can get it done. Yeah, when you get it done, it's all broken into pieces. He said, "Well, I had the instructions. Yeah, we obviously didn't follow them. You know, I've got three bolts left over, and I don't know what these little gizmos are here that came in the package. They gave us too many of them. Maybe you're supposed to use them. If you'd have followed the instructions, you'd have known that, right? Right? So just because you say, well, we go everywhere preaching.'" And we have the Bible. Well, that doesn't mean you're preaching the Bible correctly. And it certainly doesn't mean that you're the, the church that you read about in the New Testament. I mean, notice this. When folks in the first century went about preaching and teaching, here, look at the result here. In Acts 2, uh, Acts 2, in verse uh, 41, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, in the same day, they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now, the people that heard the word, in the first century, the people that heard the word, look what they did. They continued in, in the apostles' doctrine. They continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking bread and prayers. prayers. But where did they wind up? See, where did they wind up? Verse 47, Acts 2, 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such, such, such as should be saved. Now, here's my point, friends. In the first century, when they went about preaching and teaching the word, they all it, they always wound up telling about the church that Christ built. Now, it, this gets back to where we started, friends. If you're going preaching somewhere, but you're telling about a church not in the Bible, are you really preaching and teaching the way the Bible says to go preach and teach? How can you say preach and teach um, everything that Jesus commanded, teaching them to observe all things that he commanded, if you're teaching about a church that's not even in the Bible? Or you're saying that the church doesn't matter. You say, well, it doesn't really matter what church you believe in doesn't matter what church you're in. Then why are you going at all? See, it all comes right around to you're just not following the Bible. And therefore, you can't be in the church that you read about in the Bible. The church that you read about in the Bible is, uh, is, is the Lord's church. All right? It's the Lord's church. And uh, it's his body. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. Having put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. Now, let me ask you. Is the church you're in the body of Christ? 
everybody's going to say yeah. But if you say yes, then you have to say the church, the church is important. And it's significant, and it depends, and it really matters what body you're talking about or what church you're talking about. I mean, that, that's really important, right? Listen, Paul, listen, here's what Paul says about the church. He says, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, and he's the savior of the body. Now, if you're going everywhere preaching the gospel, but you're preaching about a church that's not in the Bible, you're preaching about a church that's not the body of Christ. So again, nothing about the Baptist church or the Methodist church, Lutheran, Presbyterian, whatever. And I'm just saying, friends, you know, we're looking for the church that's 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 uh, uh, described in the New Testament. And we start off by saying a thousand dollars if you can find the church you're in, right? The denomination that you're in, if you can find it in the Bible, there's a thousand dollars for you. You say, well, I'm going I'm to find the church of God. Well, let's. If you do that, friends, we're going to look at it. We're going to look at it very, very carefully, see if it lines up, see if it matches, right? Because we're not going to say, well, you, you know, you, you got some of the things right. No, we want, we want to see if it lines up exactly right. I mean, the Baptist church doesn't line up at all. It may teach some things and practice some things like the first century church did. It may do some things the way the first century church did, but what they say and do about those things like baptism, it doesn't line up with what the Bible says. And nowhere in the Bible did anybody go about preaching the word as missionaries and tell people to become part of the Baptist church. Nothing, nothing whatsoever about any of these denominations. And that's what I'm saying, friends. We're looking for, we're looking for people that are, that are interested in finding the church that you read about in the Bible. Let's get back to the, to, to the Bible. So, how are we going to know if we found if we found the the New Testament church? Well, we'll just look and see if what that group was doing is it lining up with practice and teaching and, and uh, organization and things like that with what what the Bible says. So just because a group goes out and it does missionary work doesn't mean that that it's the Missionary Baptist Church or the any other missionary minded uh, church for that matter. All right, 427-9696, 427-WMYN, 627-9563, 627-WLOE if you want to be part of the program. We're going to look, we're going to look at some uh, more characteristics of the, of the New Testament church is what we're looking for. We're, we're trying to find the church that you read about in the Bible. Let's, let's see how it's described. And just because you may have some of the characteristics of that church, does that mean that you're in the church of the New Testament? Uh, let's talk about this. The, the Church of Christ was the first church in the, in the first century. It was the first church established. On the day of Pentecost, it was the first church established by Christ. Jesus said, upon this rock, I build my church. It belongs to him. And, and it was the first one, no doubt about it. It was in the first century. So, now you might say, well, the Church of Christ, then, it's, it's the first. That's well, okay, it is. You know what that tells me? That tells me it's not the second, it's not the first, or it's not the primitive Baptist Church. I, I don't understand why, I mean, maybe I need to do a little digging on this, but um, first Baptist Church? I mean, why do you have to say first? Well, is primitive, does primitive come before first? You know, what what comes before primitive? Uh, I mean, what if there's a tie? How, how do you know the, the primitive Baptist and the first Baptist didn't start at the same time? My point is, friends, the Lord's Church doesn't need to be designated by first, second, primitive, third, whatever. It is just the church. The New Testament church began in Acts 2, and they, they gladly received his word and baptized. And the same day they were added to them about 3,000 souls. And the Lord added to the church day that said you should be saved. We read those verses, Acts 2, 41 and 47. So I know that the Lord's church is uh, came before all these denominations. And when I start looking, and if you will start looking, if you'll just do a little digging, if you will, if you will look for 
when your church started, the church you're in, when, when did it start? If you find out when it started, you're going to find out pretty quickly that it started way after the Lord's church. It started way after the Lord's church. Here's again, a Baptist preacher talking about... Uh, well, what about what about some other uh, ways that the, that uh, you that you want to say the Baptist church is identical to the church in New Testament? Okay, uh, Benedict in the history of the Baptist states that the gospel was preached in Britain within 60 years of the Lord's return to heaven. I don't find that he preached Church of Christ. I don't find that they named it anything else other than just the Baptist church. These churches appear to have been Baptistic and remained sound until Austin, the Catholic monk, brought Catholicism to the eyes in 597. Now, what did they say? They were, they were named Baptist churches? Benedict in the history of the Baptist states that the gospel was preached in Britain as Baptist. That was the first recorded Baptist church in history. Okay, but I'm saying if I go back to the Bible... You'll be back beyond my 60 years. That's right. That's number 40. All right. <laughs> so, so why not go back those 60 years? All right, why not go back those 60 years? Why, why do you have to have Benedict tell you when the, when the Baptist church started? The first recorded Baptist church was recorded by Benedict. Well, why wasn't the first Baptist church recorded by Paul or Peter? Why wasn't the first Baptist church recorded by some New Testament writer? Why wasn't the first Baptist church recorded by uh, somebody that was inspired and so that we have a record of it in the Bible? You know why? Because God didn't want it talked about. God didn't say anything about it. It didn't even come into God's mind. The Baptist church was started by John Smythe, Smith, however you want to say his name, in 1607. Now, friends, you can do you can do some search. You'll find you'll find some churches that have started long, way before the Baptist Church even. I mean, there are some that are even more primitive than the primitive Baptist Church. I mean, the, the Catholics are back there in the six hundreds, right? I mean, you've got the uh, uh, I don't I just had a list of some of the denominations when they started, but I mean, fifteen hundreds. 1400s, I mean, they're, they're all back there. Some of them compared to the, uh, you compare those to the Baptist church, the Baptist church still wet behind the ears. And definitely compared to the Lord's church, the New Testament church, there's, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of time between when the Baptist church came into existence and the Lord's church. I don't care what uh, uh, Benedict says in the history of the Baptist church. Benedict's not reading the Bible, and if you find if you have um, the the church being called Baptist, yeah, you know, sixty years after the 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 first century, then surely you would find it in the Bible. But you know what you do find if you go back and you look the, at the people who are writing after the Bible was written, after the Bible was completed, they're all talking about the Lord's church. They're not talking about the Baptist, and so. Here's my here's that's my point, friends. If you're saying, "Well, we're primitive, we're we're old, we're you know we're the first. You may be the first among the Baptists, but you're not first among among the Lord's Church. See how that goes. So, uh, I mean, the Lord's Church was the first. It was the original, and that's why we're saying let's let's look at it. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of churches that have similar characteristics. To the Lord's Church, uh, but just because they have some of the same characteristics and do some of the same things, that doesn't mean that they are uh, the Lord's Church. And we've talked about the Baptist Church. Well, they baptize. Well, the Lord's Church does too, but the Baptist Church does not baptize for the remission of sins. But the Lord's Church does because that's what the Bible says. The Bible says you're baptized for the remission of sins. The denomination to do that. The Bible says that um, the church was uh, uh, organized, it has elders, not a senior, not, not one man rule. It's independent, it doesn't have a headquarters in uh, Cleveland, Tennessee, or in Kentucky, or Utah, or wherever else, Rome. It doesn't have a headquarters that way. So, well, we're independent too. Well, okay, but that doesn't make, make the Lord's church. You say, well, we, you know, we're evangelistic. All these things, friend, I'm saying, there's characteristics, but you have to put them all together. You have to put them all together to find the church that our Lord and Savior 
died for, that he shed his blood for. And when you put them all together, when you start looking at all these characteristics, they're just they're just not the same. They just don't add up. Uh, that's like you, if you want to describe somebody, you say, well, they got blonde hair and they're tall. Well, there's a lot of tall people with blonde hair. There's a lot of tall people with with brown eyes. You know, but that doesn't make them the person you're looking for. I mean, let's go back to where we started, that Amber Alert. You have to have all the details right. You have to have the car right, the make and model right, the people right, you know, the driver right. You have to have the, especially the abducted child right. I mean, that's certainly what we're talking about. But we could go by names. See, the Baptist Church didn't have the right name. It doesn't matter how many characteristics they have right. They don't have the name right. And so we're, we're, we're trying to, to help you to see, friends, that it's not just saying, well, we've got some of it right. It has to all be right. And now somebody might say, well, you know, James, how can you how can ever how can you have everything right? You know, well, think about this, friends. If you can't be certain that everything is right about the church, now I'm talking about its practice and what it teaches. I'm not saying it's perfect because it's got people in it. But I'm saying you can be doing things and practicing things according to what the Bible says, and it can be right, and you can know it. If it's not possible, if it's not possible for the church to be found, in other words, if it's not possible for people to be doing things the way the Bible says, if it's not possible for us to uh, meet the standard or the, the pattern that Christ set up, then why, why is anybody even doing it? I mean, why did God even give us a book? If it didn't matter. But the fact that he gave us a book, gave us instructions, gave us some uh, characteristics of, of um, the church that his son died for, that tells me it can be found. We just have to do a little digging. We just have to be searching for it. We have to have the mindset that says, you know what, I'm really looking for for the church of the New Testament. And I want to do things the way the Bible says do them. And I want to practice things the way the Bible says to practice them. And, um, you know, if there's changes that need to be made, then you make those changes. But don't just say, well, we got one thing right or two things right, and therefore we're right. No. I mean, if you're in a church, if you're in a church that God never mentioned in his book, I mean, that would be my first start. Just go through the Bible, find the church you're in, find the denomination you're in. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be the Baptist church. I mean, just look for any of them. Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Pentecostal. F find find, that, Bible, find that, that church by name in the Bible. Let's just start there. I mean, that's the easiest place to start. I mean, get your concordance out. Do a little word, start, word search, word study, and see if you can find these churches in the Bible. I mean, I can I can uh, open up my concordance right here on my on my uh, computer, and I can do a word search for you. You know, we could type in you just you could just start spouting off a name of a denomination. We type it in and see if it's in there. And I I can assure you that the majority of them are not going to be in there. But that gets back to what we said. Some well, I found the name in there. You know, there was a there was a Baptist church in Martinsville that you know was the House of Prayer Baptist Church, and that's what the preacher said, Bob Ford. That's what he said. Well, the church, yeah, all those name, all those name, all those words are in the Bible. Well, friends, there's a lot of words I can find in the Bible, but that doesn't mean that that's the that's the church I want to be a part of. Friends, you will never find a word from the Lord telling you to be in any Baptist church, whether it's missionary first. First primitive, whatever. And so I'm saying get back to the Bible. Friends, I'm running out of time wrapping up. Uh, I want to remind you, we meet at 250 the Boulevard, the Church of Christ, 250 the Boulevard, Sundays at 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and Thursdays at 7 p.m. for Bible study. And if you want to reach me, 276-340-2653 is how you can reach me. A word from the Lord at gmail.com. A word from the Lord at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, friends. I hope this has really helped. And until next time, God bless and always make sure that you...